Hello, this is Dr. Gretchen Kubaki, and I am coming to you today from Los Angeles, California and PCOSWellness.com. I'm the founder of PCOS Wellness, and its purpose is to provide you with useful information if you have PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome, as about one in five women do. That's the current estimate, yeah. It's also the primary cause of female infertility. If you have PCOS, you've probably already heard this very sad fact and maybe even experienced firsthand what it's like to go through infertility. Infertility uh, happens in about 75% of women with PCOS. So this is something that's really common. And that's the first point I wanna make about it because May is Mother's Day every year and it is just one of the most painful holidays ever for women with PCOS. I know, it's just, it's so hard. And it's like the assault of Mother's Day and the cult of Mother's Day and the glorification of mothers. And there's nothing wrong with mothers. I love mothers. Mothers are great and necessary. However, for those of us who had infertility that was unresolved, meaning we couldn't get pregnant or couldn't stay pregnant, it can be really tough emotionally, especially if you've gone through a number of miscarriages, if you've gone through chemical pregnancies or false pregnancies, or if you have done a lot of other assisted reproductive technology sorts of things to help you out to try to get pregnant or stay pregnant and still didn't have the success you were looking for. And a lot of people are really insensitive about the feelings that come up around this. First of all, in part because we don't share, you know, it's one of those things where talking about being sick is relegated to the realm of old people, but PCOS is definitely an illness. It's a syndrome. Uh, it's not quite a disease, but functionally it's a disease and it should be accorded the same respect as other people who have chronic medical illness conditions. And so one of the things that I want to suggest is just to talk a little bit to a few trusted friends or family members about your PCOS and your fertility or infertility journey. Sometimes those journeys resolve themselves. You get to a point where you decide you're tired, you're happy, you are good with a child-free life. Or maybe sometimes you're like, well, this worked out okay. I never really wanted kids anyway, so yay me. I've got infertility. Don't have to worry about it, right? And um, there are other ways, of course, of resolving this issue. You could foster children, you could adopt children, you could be the world's greatest auntie, or auntie depending upon where you're from. Um, but basically, it's still got a lot of sadness associated with it. It's something where we often feel like failures, like we've failed at our most basic purpose in life sometimes, even though I think we have a lot more purposes in terms of our lives, but it can get down to those really raw, earthy, primal sorts of feelings. So that feeling of sadness, depression, loneliness, angst, anxiety can feel really raw, really primal, and just, it's so visceral. It's, it's really the definition of what I call bereft. Like you are feeling like something was really just ripped away from you, something that you always assumed was going to be okay and you were gonna be able to do those expected things in life, like get married probably, have kids, have grandchildren, and all of those dreams change and sometimes have to get really readjusted in terms of the finances, the time frames, the emotional realities. Sometimes, unfortunately, PCOS and the infertility associated with it can tear a marriage apart. Infertility is incredibly difficult, especially when it's accompanied by miscarriage loss and repeated miscarriages, which are common among women with PCOS, are something that may be too much for a marriage or a relationship that's not that strong in the first place to actually survive. So. This month, instead of focusing on Mother's Day, if it's making you feel bad about yourself or feel sad, why don't you celebrate non-Mother's Day? It's not an official holiday like Mother's Day is, but it's something where you can celebrate the good things about not having children, such as having a lot more money, a lot more time, getting an entire night's uninterrupted sleep, bathroom time all to yourself, maybe being able to go out to nice dinners and not worry about babysitters, 
or going on really nice vacations and being able to indulge because there's only two of you instead of three or four or five of you. Um, tell me in the comments section what it is that you find positive or beneficial about having no children on Mother's Day if you're celebrating it. And let me know what else you're interested in hearing about. Please like this video and share it if you can. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks so much for tuning in to PCOS Wellness. This is Dr. Gretchen Kubaki.